Okay, so here's the tour of the coop. You put a nice uh, for the summer, and it does such a great job. But um, there's a screen mesh here. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. And then the chicken wire, and this cut out in the door. Um, and then we open it up. And so we still have to finish building out the door, but it's going to um, have insulation and then a panel that goes on the door. So obviously this door isn't done yet. Then you come in and to the right side, as soon as you come in, that's, um, we're going to put up uh, an outlet there to, in case we have to use a, a plug-in water heater. It's like a pad that you set your, your watering can on and that's where the water is going to go in the corner here. And then next to it will hang their food somewhere over here. And this is our invention, which is really awesome. Gary did a great job. This is their perches. So what you do is, um, the reason we wanted it to move out of the way is because we built in a clean out door. So from the outside in the run, we can open that little door trap door where there's a little pile of dirt in front of and scoop all of the shavings and the poo out into a wheelbarrow and uh, it's not quite finished yet but um, we do the deep litter method so we only actually will be cleaning it out like two or three times a year normally it's in the spring and and fall but um, we'll see we're starting in the fall this year so uh, let's see. Okay, so I'll show you how this thing works. Basically, it swivels down. Let me do it from the middle. It pulls right down, and it sits like that. And then over here, there's a pin that goes in, and it's adjustable. It's, uh, let's see, there's a hole for the pin to go in. There it is. So the pin goes in and holds it up. And now this is level. This is straight. And uh, the girls do jump pretty high to get up on there. It's basically how high their perches are right now at home, except basically that's all that can fit. So we have three bars here. And they're uh, natural logs that he cut out of our, our woods on our property. Plenty of room. More than more than enough room for each of the girls to have plenty of space. Right now we only have 10. This will probably hold, I don't know, five chickens, five or six on each perch. So up to 18, 15 to 18 chickens, maybe even more, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> but we only have 10, so we'll see how they do. Um, at home, they have one natural one and one perch that's uh, two by four turned on the end and everyone wants to be on the natural log so they're gonna like this a lot um, okay and then on this side we've got the storage for their food and uh, shavings we're gonna we know that they'll live on this stuff if they can in the winter so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put um, a nice slanted board over where their food and shavings go. And then over here are their nesting boxes. And uh, there's there's four spaces. We're going to do another row of four. And then above that, we're going to put a counter and shelving. Um, the, the straw won't stay there. We have a um, something to put the straw in. But this is it. There's their little window. There's a lot of things we still have left to do, but they're little things. There's We have to do the rest of the caulking. We've got to hook up the, the lights and fill this in. We have to put the, um, the vents in. Both ends are going to have vents for the winter to make sure the moisture goes out. So yeah, there's, there's a little bit of stuff left to do. But um, it's all insulated and ready for the winter. And actually already on these days that have been really warm, um, we've uh, come in when it's been like 87 degrees out and 
it's been so nice and cool in here cooler than in the garage so which is also insulated but um, this just gets the greatest breeze we opened the little chicken run door which is also insulated it um, just goes right up into that recessed area and then comes down and it's ins totally insulated so um, hopefully that'll keep them nice and toasty in the winter when they're inside and we won't let them out until it's warm but uh, yeah it, I'm I'm really super excited and I think they're gonna love it and Gary did a great job yay all right so the next time we come you know, it's it's uh, not finished, but it's habitable. So <laughs> we're gonna bring the girls, and and uh, they're gonna love it. So I'm gonna do a quick update of the garden, and this is looking at the whole thing. <laughs> so let's see. We've got this is where the garlic was in this first bed here, and this morning we dug up our potatoes I think we got oh I don't know about 15 to 20 pounds maybe a little bit more so for not doing a whole lot of work I think we did pretty good um, next year we'll uh, try and get more than just two levels on it on our potato bed hopefully we'll get all the way up to the top so for not doing much work and getting that big amount of potatoes, I, I think when we get the right kind to, to trail up all the way through the dirt, I think we'll do pretty good. We're thinking maybe 10 of these will work for what we need in a year to keep us about 10 months of potatoes. So let's see, what else do we have? Here are the, sorry about that, that's Gary doing some work in the bathroom. Um, this is the straw bale. Now, we did get a lot of tomatoes off of here, and as you can see, I have a lot more to pick. And, uh, you know, I don't know if I would do it again. I think I like using the, the lasagna method of gardening so much better. But, you know, if, if you wanted to try it, I think it would work for you. Um, now... This is sort of just a big old mess. There used to be beds, but now there aren't because everything is just everywhere. But um, all the tomatoes did great. As you can see, they're just thriving. There's lots of potato, uh, tomatoes, sorry. Lots of tomatoes still growing on everything. There's my chard. Um, I planted that in June, I believe, or July. July, beginning of July. So we've been eating off of that. Gary brought me home a bunch last month in August. And uh, I've been eating on it since I've been here. Let's see. Lots of tomatoes. Uh, the Brussels sprouts didn't do that great. They kind of got, um, well covered buried as you can see the garden has just exploded the squash did absolutely amazing um, I'll take a picture of the mammoths that we got when we got here there's still tons of flowers on them there's lots of little babies everywhere so we we planted three different kinds there's a crookneck yellow uh, kind of a striped looking zucchini and a dark zucchini and I um, planted uh, baby, oh man, I'm going to forget the name of the squash, uh, sweet something. What were the name of the winter squash I planted? Buttercup. buttercup, that's it. I planted buttercup squash too. So that's in there and it's trailed all the way over to the potato bed. So <laughs> I've seen a few of the buttercup squashes. I don't know how many there are, but when everything else dies I guess we'll find them all right so lots and lots of tomatoes going crazy everywhere they've all fallen over but I we did the best we could we tried to stake them um, here's another bed Gary built just a few weeks ago um, 
you know you just throw some we're getting ready to build another one as you can see every time we mow we collect everything in the bagger and we're basically starting the bottom layer of the lasagna garden bed what we do is we use the grass as the bottom layer and that will kill as you can see the grass that's already on the ground um, and not let it grow up through so we get a good layer of that on and then we add some kind of like fill it's very sandy dirt but we mix it with compost and then put that on and then we plant our seeds in it and this look at it's it's awesome it's done great I, I don't I don't know anything else to say except that you know every year we're just gonna keep doing it you just keep layering it on every year it mulches down and and it's awesome so let's see we've got uh, I think these are all turnip greens and that's more charred and like I said this is getting ready to be a new garden bed now the whole reason we did this was we wanted to kill the grass so that we can plant some winter rye here and that's what we're going to do um, we're going to move all of these pots off because they're almost all done anyway all the flowers are all blooming lots of dahlias all of the gladiolas already bloomed but there's lots of dahlias blooming still I got one nice jalapeno pepper plant here and one in the garden uh, you know the jungle garden over there I've got three gorgeous um, uh, what are these things called eggplants <laughs> there's one baby one growing right there cute more flowers and I brought two more that I need to plant so that's what those buckets are for um, our bell peppers I believe or what those were they died <laughs> uh, oh that tomato fell down again now these tomatoes in the pots I think if we were here more to water them more consistently they probably would have produced better they have lots of tiny little tomatoes nothing like the ones in the overgrown garden but um oh this basil did great in that plant pot right there really good I'm gonna pack that to bits now and dry it um yeah these tomatoes look like our tomatoes at, on the Cape just did not do well at all. Nothing like the ones in the lasagna garden beds. So I highly recommend doing that. Pretty dahlias. Aren't they pretty? All right. So basically that's it for the garden. I have to quickly uh, harvest all of this because we're going home tomorrow back to the Cape. Uh, for a couple of weeks and then we'll be back here with the chickens so look at all the marigolds I really should pick those and dry them for the chickens but I probably won't so I'm starting to harvest put them all in that bucket and uh, and that's for the compost because those have already started rotting because they're all laying on the ground so <laughs> just thought you might want to see our our um, rhubarb did really well it overwintered in a in a planter just out here we brought it last fall and it just sat in a planter we didn't think it was going to live but it did and then we planted it this spring and it just exploded we've had about four harvests off of it and we're going to do it again so yeah who knew and there's a horseradish still in a planter from last year We'll probably plant it, maybe, hopefully. I don't know. The uh, asparagus all live. That's that ferny stuff that you see. That's asparagus. Once it's gone to, well, it hasn't gone to seed. It's not flowered, but it lived. So hopefully that'll be good. My sage. Some more uh, beets or radishes. I'm not sure. Yeah, everything did really great. I'm super surprised and happy. Yeah, there's another Brussels sprout. Not do well. Too crowded by all of the, well, everything. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. All right, let's visit the chickens in their new home.
I hope they don't. Hi, babies. Hi, doodles. What are you doing? Are you in your new coop? Hey, there's their water, their perches, their chicken door, and their nest boxes. Oh, somebody's already learning how to go in their nest box. Hi, babies. Franny, how's your new house? Yeah, are you loving it? Sweet girls, what are you doing in here? <laughs> Is that your food? You're just discovering that? Oh, smart girls. Smart girls, in your house. Oh, can mommy get another egg? Huh? Nobody's coming out here. No. <laughs> oh, Scarlet's going to lay an eggy. Hi, babies. Hi, all the girls. Don't give them too Not much. More. Didn't know where I was going. Chicky, chicky, chicky. Come on, Scarlett. You're holding up the farm over here, everybody. This is the only way in. You guys are going the wrong way. Oh, they're eating stuff in here. Yeah, they're eating stuff over here. Come back out and show them the way in. This way. Come on, get in there. Come on, Scarlet. This way. We're out. Come on, Scarlet. Come on, Scarlet. So this is our before ground and we just got the girls in and they're starting to scratch like mad. They're preparing this bed for winter rye. It's our first experience with winter rye. So they're working for their living. They're finding lots of good bugs down there and pooping, had their manure. Callie's very interested in what they're doing. It's like, why can't I get in there with my chickies? <laughs> All right, work hard, girls. Yay, foraging chickens. <laughs> awesome.